<laughs> Hello, welcome back. So we're at this point, we have the geometry, we drag and drop here the mesh, remember to save it every now and then, and we're ready to move to the meshing stage, okay? But before moving to that, I, let me show you the, the, the case that you already have now the workbench, I open it here. So this is what, what I prepare, okay? So see that in this case, I generated different geometries, okay? So I have a geometry with symmetry, with no symmetry, and then I have these two. See here that I duplicated, but I could have just linked this one to this one without, without duplicating this one. So it's up to you, okay? So, but see that here, different geometries, okay? And different meshes. So I have here an structure type mesh. It's fine mesh, it's a wall resolving. Then I have with no symmetry, okay? Again, same stuff will be larger, no, twice this one, okay? Then I have with symmetry structure mesh, wall modeling, okay, wall function, and then an, a structure mesh, okay, wall modeling. So I'm going to show you how to generate these two, okay? There is a difference now between the structure and the structure. So a structure probably, I'm going to give you best solutions, but these one are much, much easier to, to use. And I think honestly, today's software, the uh, solvers today, uh, they, they can handle with no problem any kind of cells without losing accuracy, okay? So my advice is to stick with this instructor measures. But as you can afford these measures, yeah, you can use those meshes. So see that after you generate the meshes, you connect to Fluent and then you generate here, you know, you, you, you export it to Fluent and you are ready to go. So just let me close here and let me go back here. So let's go to the, to, to the meshing tool. So to open this one, just double click. Okay. So here there is only one option. So you need to right click to select different options, just one. Okay. So it will open the meshing and when it's open the meshing probably it, it, it's going to show you some highlights on the screen there i already hide that screen okay so we're going to see that there's a few small differences but it's not a problem okay but the first sense you see here that it, it imported the mesh okay the surface that you created in uh in the same model that you have it here and now you can mesh it. So remember always when you have the light in here means that requires generation or requires to update it. The same will be here. See that you have a uh, light in there. Okay, so when you see a light in there, it means that you need to update it. You see a, a rec symbol means that it's something wrong. So try to avoid rec symbols or if you have a rec symbol requires attention that you need to fix something. So if you press generate, it will create a mesh. Okay, but it's a very bad mesh. Okay, so remember that we have the boundary layer, see that one single cell, so this is not okay. It's not a bad mesh, but it's not okay for the physics that we, we, we want to solve. So if you click here, here's you have the options. So very important by default, probably I think in your case also, the physics of preference, uh, ANSYS measure will propose you a mechanical solver, a mechanical measure. So here you just change it and use CFD, okay? So the parameters is a little bit different. CF, CFD, and then you have solver preference. You can choose between these three solvers, choose Fluent, okay? So this is the first thing that always you need to do, okay? You can also set up the default value. So somewhere here, I think in, in file, see that you have preferences somewhere, options. You can set up those values here, okay? So see that default, physics preference. Also, you can set units here. So you have design modelers, you are in design modeler, you can set up your default values just to show you that. So we have these new options. See that now you have again the lighting and means you need to generate or date it. You have a different mesh, still it's not, not good. But now we need to, as you can imagine, we need to add sizing, okay? Different sizing functions, smaller cells. But you see in your screen, you see that circle around my cursor. That circle that you see there is the dimension of the largest cell in your domain. This is very useful, okay? It's already telling you that dimension. And that dimension, that is a global parameter and can, can be controlled here. See here that that one corresponds to 0 0.35 meters. So let's put here 0 0.1 meter that corresponds to the diameter. And see that you have it there. So I want the radius 0 0.05, maximum cell. So here you can already start to choose the maximum cell dimension, but remember you have global and local. So usually you put here 
a global parameter. Do not put something very small because that is global and will be all around the mesh. Remember later you want to add local. So I will put 0 0.01 meters there. It's okay. So this is global parameter and now you can go generate. See that it's slower and see that you have this. Okay, much better mesh. Okay, look nicer, perfect mesh. But again, remember that we have the boundary layer there, so we need to add some refinement towards the wall. And when I talk about a structure mesh, it's basically it's basically this. So let me fix the screen here. Is this that the meshes are uniform? Okay, are quads or X's and they are uniform. Okay, so these are the best cell types that you can use in CFD, but uh, sometimes for for industrial uh, applications, it's very difficult to get something like this. But don't be afraid about this, about using triangles. They work as all, also well. Okay, so to control this, okay, so let me, you are here. Also, by the way, here, as you go here, a statistic, you can also get the statistic of the mesh. You have some old advanced options. I know I'm not going to talk about this. However, I always invite you to read the help. You have the help online help and there you, you you are going to have uh, explanation of these auctions but for the moment these are advanced auctions that uh, rarely you, you, you are going to to, to modify uh, okay so to add a different method or sizing function you right click here and see here insert and let's insert a method you select the body okay see that it's a single body that's what is important when you create the, the geometry to have a single body, but otherwise you have multiple bodies and it's not easy to do the mesh. So you select in the case of 2D, you select the surface, and then here you can sh choose different methods. So see that here you have quadrilateral dominant or triangle. Let me show you, see I choose triangle. So this will be a triangular mesh, what is called you now a fully unstructured mesh. Okay, so see that it's different from the other, probably it's prettier to the eye, I don't know, it depends who, depends on your taste, but this is what is called a fully unstructured. Instead, when you have quads and they are perfectly aligned, these are a structure type mesh, okay? So these are the best meshes, but they are not easy to generate. So let's work for the moment in this one. So see that you have here the auctions, quadrilateral dominant, and let's force also to be everything quad, okay? Generate. And we're done. So see that you insert here, see that you have many options. So see that you have the most important option. You can insert a method like the one we did and then sizing functions. Okay, so if you insert a sizing function, you can change the dimension. The lo now this is local. So if you select the whole surface there, and now let me put here, I want a dimension there of 0 0.05 again see the circle there that circle is telling you the dimension so see that this local if i go here this local will override the the global okay so again it's a little bit slower but because you have smaller cells you know, just put in more more cells more points in in your domain so you can get an id i know these are 2d meshes not too many cells, so as you start to do stuff like 100 million cells, since our, our expenses are heavy, even if it runs in parallel, it, it tends to be a little bit slow. So it's doing the meshing, it's taking, yeah, it's taking a long time, okay, it's a strange. Okay, so 70%, 80, 100, and we have it here, okay. So see that somehow it seems that this is smaller okay but see that it's not fully fully structured okay the lines there are not a hundred percent uh straight so i'm going to show you, you know how to correct that how, how to get that selection but here you see that you can control that let me put it back to 0 0.1 uh, that one a little bit small but as you have seen now yeah you can control locally and you can apply this refinement in the whole surface in the body in an edge okay or around about uh, a vertex so see that i'm going to insert sizing and see that here you have the type of selection that you want to do i want to select an edge select this edge and see those yellow lines there represents this size 
of the element. So I will put there 0 0.005. Generate. And this is what we have. You see that you are controlling now locally here and then you have the global value. So this is now, this is fully a, 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 on structure mesh. A structure mesh, will, what it will do is that you define a dimension here and everything will be propagated in the whole domain. Okay, but you need to, for, to force that kind of mesh, okay? So let me suppress you here. You see here, suppress. I don't want to use that option. So again, it's you generate, it will generate just using this edge size and the global size and parameters. Okay, but if I want to propagate this size in the whole domain, there is another option. So I go here, insert, see that you have face meshing. Select the whole domain, apply. Here you see, you force the type of element. So you want quadrilaterals, generate, and see that now you have it here. Okay, so this is what is known as a structural mesh, okay? So you have it you have that propagation, okay? So now let's do see that also you you can change the sizing in these two edges. So let's add another sizing, okay? Select this and this edges, okay? Because they are the same, so you can select with control two edges and give a dimension, okay? So you can give an element size or the number of the div uh, division. So I would say that I have 500. Oh, let me see that I have. 800. Now, let me see that I have a thousand elements there. If you do a thousand elements like this in, in 3D, it's a lot of cells. You will see that very fast it will go to something about 5 million cells. Okay, so I see that a thousand cells in the whole domain. Okay, and generate. And we have this. Okay, we have our, our division in the whole mesh. Okay, so now that we're happy with this, let's do also something that, remember that we, we want to resolve the boundary layer in the top wall here. This will be the symmetry axis. So we need to cluster more cells here. So how do we do that? Again, we can do like, okay, we have here already this edge size. We can increase this one. Let me increase to 0 0.1, generate. Okay, see that now this is smaller. And now what, what I can do is just to control the stretching, to stretch more cells here. But see that also the dimension, the this dimension in X is not not it's not being kept constant. So there is something that when you are doing these kinds of measures, I recommend you that here, when you put the edge size in behavior, force that behavior, not put it hard there. So so when you put it hard there you are forcing to, to have that specific dimension, okay? So I always recommend you to do that. And same here also. So in all the edges, just force that behavior when you are doing this kind of mesh, you know? See that now we have this, perfect, beautiful. So now how do we control this stretching for this kind of meshes? So see that here you have an option called bias. So now let's control the bias. So I want to bias, you have different options there. And let me add a bias, a bias factor of four. Again, in the documentation, you will see how this bias, bias factor is computed. I don't recall that it, it is a function, maybe a power law function, I don't recall. But see that this is just clustering more cells there. You have many uh, different options, okay? So you have this one that it will go to the other side or probably you will have it to, toward both sides uh, edges, okay? So it's up to you to choose the, the, to pick up the right one. So for me, this is the right one, generate. And see that you cluster your cells there. Okay, so it's still, but what is interesting that now look at that, if I go to the other extreme, see that I don't have the bias here. So also I need to apply another function. So let's use this one here and let's say that, let me duplicate this one, change the edge selection. I want to select this one. Okay, 
So I don't recommend you to select these two edges because see that now this bias function, it is different. So you have to be careful to with that selection. Okay, so now I choose this one. Okay, so do not do the selection and duplicate both because the extremes tends to be opposite the bias. So that is difficult to control. So it's better to do it individual, individually. So see that you, ha you have the bias there and this is it. This is the mesh. Okay, so now at this point, just go crazy. Okay, you can uh, you can change put cluster cells. So we have seen in the theory how to compute uh, the integral length scales, also how to estimate the y plus value and the first cell center. So for instance, here we have this one. So if you want to measure a distance in this mesh, see here that node node selection and select from here to here. And this is the distance from here to this node. Okay, so you have this distance, and remember that is the cell center, the solver is cell center. So you divide this one by two. Okay, so you have this distance, you can compute your y plus value. Okay, we know we we know our Reynolds number. So I, I mentioned that in this case, I, I, I we want to run the tolerance case to a Reynolds of of a hundred thousand. Okay, so I already know that this distance should be in the order of ten to the minus five. Okay, you see it's very, very, very small. So just to remind you here, 100,000, okay? So that can be controlled, okay? So what I, I need to do is remember that you have these parameters, okay? Okay, so let me go here and let me, to control that one, you can increase the bias factor. So I, here we'll put it in 10 to 10. Okay, so let's measure this distance now. Mm -mm -mm. So we need to increase also the number. So let me go here, 0 0.5, generate. A little bit slow. So one thing that yes, will show you when you do the instructor mesh, it is much easier because oops, what problem? Okay, we I need to update this, the opposite also. So remember that they are linked. So see that you you get this symbol is telling you that you have a match between the edges. So the face meshing is not working fine. So you need to have the same number of cells or say in a space in both egg, but in all the extremes not in order to do this these meshes. So let me go from here to here. So you are there. So let me increase a little bit more this one to 20. Okay, so that one should have that value. So let's see what we have now. Okay, so now that, that one should be about that value that we're looking. Okay, so it will be 0 0.03. Okay, that, let's say that we're happy with this value. Probably I can increase this one. Let me increase to 0 0.2. Let me increase here also to 0 0.2. Okay, so in this case, see that you can control everything. You can estimate your distance of first cell center. You have the, the formula, okay? You, we know our Reynolds. So let's do it like this. Okay, so this one should, should, should do the trick. Okay, so let me see. Okay, so if I click here and here. Okay, that is about right. Okay, so we're there. So see that very fine mesh that we have and also check the other the other extreme okay so we have this mesh always control the number of cells so you have okay a quarter of million cells probably i had it too much but let's reduce instead of using 0 0.0 let's put 0 0.05 okay this is okay Okay, but so this is a little, it's up to you to play with the parameters. Okay, you know how to estimate your distance. Also, you need to, to be to keep the num the cell count within the maximum number of cells that you can use. That is a little bit more than a half a million cells. Okay, so this is what we have. This is, by the way, this is a very, very, very fine mesh 
in 2D. Okay, so in 2D you can afford this, it's very fast. Okay, so now we're ready to run. So let's check again 100,000 cells. But before running, remember that we need to define boundary conditions. Okay, to define boundary conditions, okay, you need to select edges, assign names, and we haven't done that so far. So to do that, in this case that is 2D, we can select edge, edge. Let me select this one. You select that one, right click and see here, create name selections and give it a name, inlet. Now let me do it here. So this will be outlet and here the bottom one will be Symmetry. So these are the names. So I misspelled there, so it doesn't matter. Then there I will call it wall. Okay, so you have this, name it selections, and you have all your edges. In this case, in 3D will be surfaces. Okay, so you can rename it there or you can erase it. It's up to you. I will call it sin. Okay, so now we have the whole definition. By the way, if you forget to, to or if you don't you don't select an edge or surface, Fluent will put it automatically in a default group. Okay, will be by default will be a wall. Okay, so in theory here we don't need to select this wall because Fluent will will put it. Even we don't need to select this and this because Fluent will put everything in a default wall. That then you select this to wall if you are not using symmetry, but you need to select this inlet and outlet to assign there. So this is it. This is the mesh. So again, you go here. Now you close, it will save the, the mesh. So you go back here. Remember, view, well, you can leave it here. See that now you have a new file here. This is the mesh. But this mesh, is, it is in ANSYS mesh format. So you need to convert it to Fluent. So now you need to co connect this mesh to Fluent. So as you go like this, and see that now you have the light in there, meaning that you need to update this. Right click, update. So this update is simply converting this mesh into Fluent format. See here that you have the location. So remember that whatever you put these files, in my case I'm working in the desktop, you enter here and you will see all the files, okay? So let's wait while it's doing the mesh, the conversion. So see that it's converted and see here that you have the new mesh. Okay, so this is the ANSYS Fluent Mesh. So as you go back to that folder in Sys, see that you have it there, okay? So something that I, I, I would like to mention that I don't like to work here in the workbench. So I will do later the setup here, but then I will show you how to set up the case outside the, the workbench. And why I don't like to do this, because you see here, it is saving too much file information when you're running large file, file, uh, simulations also, the meshes are too large and it's saving a lot of backup, uh, backup data. So I don't like to work here and it, it, it tends to be a little bit slower because you are using more memory. So I like to run in the Fluent Isolator. I will show you later how to do it, but I will set up the first care case here. So we have the, the mesh and Fluent. So let's say that now we want to create a second mesh, okay? So I'm not going to run the case. Uh, let me erase here, okay? Use erase, okay? So see that the mesh was erased. And let me duplicate this one, okay? So it is duplicating what we have done. So all the auctions, everything that you put it there, name it selection, it will be duplicated. And let me re rename it, okay? And I will call it I will call it instructor. Instructor. So let's run this one, okay? So this is the structure and this is the instructor mesh. And let's redo the mesh in here. Okay, so we'll select different parameters just to show you how to do the mesh, okay, using the instructor options, okay? As I mentioned this, as you see, the, that, that mesh was beautiful. These are the perfect meshes that we want, but that is the section rather than the rule, that kind of meshes. Okay, so we're here, we're back here. So we want to raise everything that we have here. So you go right click, clear generated data, and actually I don't need any of these options. Okay, erase everything. The name it selection remains, okay? 
So there is no need to redo that. So automatic method here, let's choose triangles. And let me choose here on suppress and let me choose that sizing seems to be all right. So see, as, as we don't put that option, the face, the face matching option. Okay. This one, the face meshing is not doing any, it's not forcing to have this instructor mesh. So we can have this nice triangular mesh. Again, the idea is the same. Okay. So you can increase. Okay, you can add sizing functions here, here, but here, when you add a sizing function, does not propagate in the whole domain. Okay, so for instance, just to show you, if I put a sizing here, okay, so let me insert a sizing there and let me put 0 0.01 there, uh, 0 0.5, okay, and generate. It's just you have it here close to the wall, and then there is a growth factor that. See that is transition from this to the global value. That transition from the small to the large is controlled by this growth rate. Okay, so basically 1.2 means that this the the cells are increasing in area or volume by 20% when you move. Okay. So it's up to you. You so the smaller the values, okay, the slower this transition will be. So let me show you 1.05. Okay, so sometimes 1.2 value is a good value. Okay, so see here clearly you see the influence that now it's a slower transition. Okay, so let me erase this edge sizing that I don't want it there, but I want to add an edge sizing in this top there in the top, and I want to put there 0 0.005. Okay. So basically here it will go from 0 0.005 to 0 0.1. Okay. And see that now you have a nicer transition there. Okay. You are selecting the whole edge and see that then you want to control from here to here, you just change the growth rate. So this is a beautiful, nice mesh. Okay. So now how, how do we add the boundary layer? So when you are doing the instructor meshes, adding the boundary layer is different. There is another option. So as you go here, insert, See here that you have inflation. So it's usually here, most of the software will call it like this inflation layer or boundary layer. So see that first you need to select the scoping method. Where this, where do you want to grow this boundary layer mesh? You select, okay, it's a body selection. It's not a sort of body selection, the body. And then I want to grow that boundary layer. Okay, you can choose geometry name selection. I will choose in this edge. Okay, so in the, this edge, you are going to grow upon this inflation layer using these layers, two layers. Okay, so we have seen from the theory also that it's a good idea, depending if you are doing wall, if you are using wall function, it's a good idea to put at least five to six. If you are wall resolving, you need to put there a lot of cells. So let me put here 10. Okay, the growth rate the, is the idea of the previous one that we just explained. So I put it here, this. Okay, and inflation layer. Okay, selection. Okay, I didn't select everything, anything. So see that now you have there the selection, one edge. And this is what you have. Okay, so as you see, it's much, much easier to control. And it adapts very well to any kind of geometry. If you have crazy geometry, school, whatever, it, it, it adapts very well. So, for instance, and what I mentioned that this one is easier to control. So you have different options, inflation option. So it's most transition. What it's doing is it's doing a transition from the smallest cells to the largest one. Okay. To keep a uh, smooth transition. So do you don't smear gradients. Okay. The problem is that you have a large transition, the gradients, you're going to have a problem in the accuracy of the gradient. So this most transition is controlling that. But for instance, is you know, the distance from the the wall to the first cell center, you can change that option. Instead of using that one, the default one that works very well, you can have more control. First layer thickness. And let me say that I want to have this. Uh, probably it will be this. Okay. And see that you have it there. 
the boundary layer. So you, you can go here and measure, and it's from here. Okay, sorry, it's here that you need to select from here to here. Okay, see that when you give the distance in here, you're giving the distance of the edge, then the cell center will be half that. Okay, so you have the distance, but see when I mentioned the, the growth rate and the transition that this is really bad. See that from very small cells, you go to large cells and here you're going to have problems computing the gradients. So what you can do is that half a smaller triangles here, okay? Or you can add more layers that probably here will be easier to control adding more layers, okay? But it's up to you, but usually you add there. So this is the, the price that you pay. We have seen when you, when you want to resolve the boundary layer, you need to add a lot of layers also to control that transition between the inflation layer and the external cells. I see that much better, okay? But still we can do better, okay? So let me go here and let me put 30. So on pers my personal experience, usually 30, no more than 30 you need. So see that 30 actually is too much. Okay, this is not very nice. Okay, actually you can use it, but it's not very nice because here, see that here, you are not putting too, too many cells. Okay, so let's skip that around 24. Okay, then also you can play with the growth rate. Okay, I could have changed the growth rate instead of reducing. So let's see that. Okay, so let's see that this one is okay. Okay, so let's take this mesh for granted. Okay, this is a good one and let's run also in this mesh. Okay, so see here that this is much easier. You saw that this workflow is much easier than the uh, uh, structure one. The structure, even the structure was easy, but imagine that now that you have more complicated geometries and not even more complicated. Imagine that you have a T, another pipe coming here. Just getting that pipe in a structure mesh is tricky. Instead of structure meshes, just give global local parameters, grow the boundary layer. So we're going to do something like that in tutorial three and four. So. Now that we're done here, uh, let me see the mesh count. This is, so see that even that we have, probably we, we have better control in the boundary layer, see that we have less cells than the other. Usually also a structural mesh has the tendency to, to, to use more cells. But in any case, everything can be controlled. So see that now you have the two meshes and what you need to do now is to convert everything to, to Fluent or the solver that you want to, do, to use. If you want to use CFX, you put it there. So we want to use Fluent put it there, update. So now you're transferring this mesh to this solution. This is a structural mesh to the solution. And now also after this is done, okay, you see that lighting always means that you need to update it. In this case, it's doing the conversion. And see here that you have more files. We put the second one, we put it here, update. And see that you have mesh one, mesh two, you have the location. <clears throat> okay. Ta -ta. Doing the conversion. And we have it every now and then safe. So now at this point, what we're going to do is just run one of these cases, okay, or both cases. So at this point, I will stop here, okay, and then we move in the next video where we're going to run the simulation. So see you next time, bye.